Hi everybody, my name is Rob Scott from UC Today and in this session we'll be talking about interactions analytics and how NICE and Exedia are addressing the contact center market with their latest enlightened models that provide unique data insights. Today I'm joined by Jonathan Wax, Vice President of EMEA for NICE and Exedia. Welcome. Rob, hi, how are you? I'm very good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, not bad. Very good. Very happy to be here. Yes, indeed. In the middle of lockdown, nonetheless. Yep. Uh, thanks for joining me. It's great to see you again. Um, Jonathan, always a great place to start before we jump into the session. But, you know, mm -hmm. Can we have a quick bio and you tell me a little bit about what you do for uh, Nice and Exedia, please? Yeah, absolutely. No problem. So um, uh, some of you uh, may know um, uh, Nice purchased Nexedia about four years ago, just over four years ago. Um, and basically to bring the, the analytics um, applications and solutions that we have into the, into the overall NICE portfolio. Um, Nexedia had been set up um, just over 20 years ago now. It was, it was a spin-off from university. Um, and I started working for, for Nexedia as it was then in 2005. So set up the EMEA operation um, uh, 15 years ago, as I say, and then for the last four years uh, has been part of NICE and we've expanded the, the, the product portfolio from just being interaction analytics to the, to the broader, um, as we call it, customer engagement analytics. So we're looking at not just the interactions in the contact center, but customer journey analytics, IVR analytics, and a lot of other you know, digital containment areas. So basically, you know, we are the, the, the part of NICE that has have the technologies that can help people understand what is going on in their contact centers, how, they're into, how organizations are interacting with their customers through various channels, and then map all of those out um, you know, really the aim is that we give people insights to improve customer service generally, but also to help them customer experience and digital transformation journeys. Great stuff. And today we're going to talk about your new enlightened product. But before we do, I, I wanted to just kind of get a little bit background on, um, I, you know, the kind of use of AI in the contact center. And, you yeah. know, first of all, how can AI assist quality assurance in a, in a kind of contact center CX environment? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I think one of the, the, the primary roles is if you look at most quality programs um, that, that exist, um, the, the, the aspirations of those are really uh, driven on, you know, how do I improve customer service? You know, a lot of them are linked to CSAT or NPS surveys, whichever way you look at it. And, and there what you're trying to do is to say, I want to make sure that when I have an interaction, it is as good as possible. And to do that, you want to be able to, to, to coach your agents so that they deliver that level of service. And, and, and the, the challenge I think people face is that, um, you know, historically that was always done by people. You know, you, you, as a, either a team leader or a quality person, you sat there, listened to a number of calls and gave them a, a score that was then used to, to, to coach the, the agent. Um, and, and of course, the issue of that is scale. You know, if you wanted to do a really thorough job of coaching and you've got 100 agents, you probably need to employ 100 people to listen to the calls. And, and the economics just don't work. You know, no one's ever going to do that. So it's always been a selective um, process. You know, you've taken a number of calls and, and you review those and that's how you use the feedback. Um, and the, the challenge has been even, you know, if, if you look at how analytics has evolved over the last 10, 15 years in the contact center space, there are elements of the conversations that we can we can automatically you know, produce or metrics that we can automatically produce. But those are really, you know, binary metrics. Did this happen or did this not happen? And a lot of what people want from a customer sentiment point of view are far more um, subjective measures. You know, um, many years ago, I remember working with a company who said, did the agent answer the customer with a smile in their face? You know, and it's like, that's interesting. Yeah, what do you, and, and you can think about what it means, but then you say, how do you say, you know, if you are just looking at what people say, it's impossible to answer that. So what, what AI is able to do is, you know, is, is, is you know, the, or, the, or the power of AI modeling is that actually if you have a large volume of data and you can produce um, labeled data which associate with something. So let's go back to this case of you know, quality monitoring. I've got a quality process that's to support customer satisfaction and I'm looking for the following behaviors. If I've got that label data, I can then create an AI model and that AI model can then be applied to 100% of all of my interactions. So when it comes to a QM process, rather than saying, well, we, you know, well done, Rob, uh, listened to a few of your calls last week and this one's a whatever and this one's a what, you know, 
it's basically said, well, you know, on, here are all your calls last week. You're really good in this area. But, you know, um, you know, maybe those are, I don't know, service calls. But actually, if you're on a sales call, you're not so good. And these are the areas we want you to work on. So really, the power of AI is to say, we can now go beyond sort of explicit analytics, i.e. is something there said or not said, and move it to far more, you know, able to do subjective analysis, but to do it in a consistent and objective way. So I think that that's the power of AI. Um, and, 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 and I suppose it's moving to that point of, you know, most, a lot of people from an analytics perspective just want it to, yeah, just tell me something, just give me the answer. And the AI models allow you to build out, you know, that's the answer, more, becoming more of a black box solution than, than it used to be. Yeah, I find it fascinating that it's able to detect sentiment. I, I think it's just amazing technology. And how accurate is that technology, you know, the, the, the AI detecting yeah. the sentiment? Um, that, so it's, it, the, I suppose the easy answer is it's, it is accurate. I mean, you know, when we've run it with people, they've looked at it. And, you know, so normally when we first create some of the models, you compare it to benchmarks. And basically, you know, if people say this, uh, you know, if, if you give me 100 calls, I'd expect 20% to be like this and 20 or whatever those are. Like, we're matching those pretty evenly. So, so it, it is, you know, and, and it comes back down to, you know, sort of all AI models. It's based, you know, we base it on a set of labeled data. If that labeled data is accurate and correct, which, it, you know, it is, um, then we get very accurate models. You know, there have been cases when we've had some results so you come out and look at them and go oh, that's a bit weird and then when you dive into the data labeling okay, there may be some issues with the labeling data or some of the calls we've got aren't what we quite expect so so i think you know it, it's like if you put good quality data into it we're getting very good accurate models coming out of that. that's really good and are you able to go back through old data because obviously there must be a lot of call recording data hanging around uh, yeah. <laughs> so are, are our contact centers able to kind of learn from the past, if you will? Um, yeah, well, I think, it, yeah, so it depends on the organization. Yeah, some people keep their data for a, you know, a, a month or two months, and so they don't have huge backlog. Some organizations, especially, you know, financial services, when you've got regulated products, have got lots of data going back, you know, for years. But, but you know, I, I think quite a, we see quite a few customers now, especially, especially if they've got an analytics platform already and, and they're using it, for, for um, you know, um, it, uh, you know, we have organisations who've got a lot of products that are on annual renewals. So they're keeping analytics data for a year. They've got the calls for a year. You know, so it's very easy to go back and say, you know, a lot of these companies have got you know literally tens if not hundreds of millions of calls already in their analytics system. So we've got a huge body of data which we can work. With. Yeah, I can imagine the, just the more data you're consuming, the the, the better it's getting ultimately because yeah. you know these machines need to learn, don't they? Yeah, yeah, and yeah, you know, and again, you know, the the, the you know, there's you know in the, in the AI world, there's unsupervised learning and supervised learning. You know, and the aim for us is our you know what, a lot of what we want to do is unsupervised. You let it learn. But going back to your point about um, accuracy and everything, you know, if if you come up with going that doesn't look right, or that you just don't have enough examples of the label data, you can you know you can actually help the system and go through a supervised process. So you know the the the, the approaches of AI also help you know both the scale of what you can do and the, and the accuracy. Great stuff. And a lot of organizations and certainly contact centers have uh, gone home to work. Uh, so there's a lot of remote working happening right now. Uh, yeah. So there, there are common, I suppose there's a number of challenges associated with sending your agents home yeah. to work. Um, yes. But how can a solution like this help home working uh, contact centers? Um, so I think um, the easiest way of putting it is, is it, it gives you a very good basis to have a conversation with an employee based on all of the interactions they're having. So, you know, you're exactly, you know, the, the, um, you know I don't know how long ago is it now, two, it's only two months, or whatever, you know, two, two, two and a half months ago before we got into this, this current pandemic world, you know. Um, contact centers were running as they had done forever, you know, pretty much centralized functions when everyone's there. And there were some very, you know, um, standard processes of what you do. The move to remote working has put lots of stresses on, on, on the organizations. You know, some individuals have been stressed because of you know, the, the, the virus and maybe their home environment. You know, and at others, it's, they're, they're not used to working that remotely. And, and I think, you know, one of the, the powers of, of, of what we see happening is if you can sit there and have a, you know, let's say I'm going to, I'm only, I'm, 
instead of having like the traditional coaching session, you know, once a month I'd spend a couple of hours with you. If you say every day I'm going to spend five minutes with you or 10 minutes with you or all each of my team members, and you can talk to them about stuff that happened the previous day, you know, how they handle customers, then, then you're actually doing a lot to, you're probably actually supporting them in a way they've not really been supported before. So even though they're remote, they're getting far more constant and if, if, the, if the topic of the conversation is how they're dealing with the, 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 the customers and the types of conversations they're having, you know, if the focus is, we know it's difficult, we know it's remote, you're all remote, and the customers are in a similar situation, but, you know, our focus is on doing the best for our customers and customer satisfaction, customer sentiment. If you can help coach them on that on a daily basis, you know, it, it means that they become, they still stay engaged with the organisation rather than sitting there going, I answer the phone, I do my job, I might have it, and once a month I have a review or whatever. If you do if you move to that that the the way that you know we are using the your call data to help us to you know manage your situation to improve how you deal, then I think a lot, a lot of people can can actually there is a positive, I say, coming out of moving to that remote world. Yeah, certainly I imagine there's a lot of positives, especially return on investment here for the business yeah. is exceptional, yeah. I imagine. Um yeah. Okay, let's jump into Nice and Lighten. Tell us about yes. when did it when did it come out? What what's uh, what's it all about? Yeah. So so basically, um, I mean, Enlighten um, was launched. Um, I think it was January this year. It may have been December. Last, I don't think it was December. I think it was December. So basically, Enlighten is 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 uh, is uh, four or five months old now. Um, and basically, it is the latterly it's the result of some customer work, some customer projects, and some initiatives we started running the back end of last year, which was looking going back to I think as we were talking about earlier on how can we use AI, how can we use the power that's out there of AI to improve the way we uh, the way we support our customers from an analytics perspective, and I mean for about the last five years, um, yes, yeah, so it's probably about the last five years we've had. Um, we've been able to produce a sentiment score um, on a per call basis. Um, and the sentiment score is you know, made up of, or is, com is comprises elements that are said, so it's vocal, you know, how, and elements of the acoustics of how it's said and, and laughter and so forth. And that actually was a, as a basic AI model, but it was, it was, I think we trained it more than AI training it. And then people said, actually, the concept we had there is oh that's really quite interesting if i can create an, um, um, a number of multiple numbers of enlightened models actually it then makes the whole analytical process easier because you know they, if they're sort of as all say you know they're off the shelf you say let's plug in seven and if you just give me some calls and i plug these seven in i then get metrics you know outputs based on these seven models so you know it's, it's the, the i think the early work last year was saying actually is it possible to take the audio files that we've got, you know, the audio data, the, you know, the transcripts, the labeling data that we have, um, and then build out these models. And, and basically, we proved that out back end of last year. So this year, what we've done is we've now launched, launched Enlighten. And so in, in basically, Enlighten is the name for the, um, um, you know, it used to be called derived data, but basically Enlighten is our AI driven models that allow us to automatically produce an any given number of metrics that help organizations. You know, we've got some, we talked a bit about agent behaviors earlier. You know, we've got some looking at agent behaviors, we've got some looking at sentiment, we've got some looking at complaints. You know, we're looking at how we can apply it in the world of fraud and sales, uh, sales effectiveness. So basically, any, you know, anything that is, the, in fact, anything that requires humans to do it. Um, and we can, you know, by their assessment of what's coming or their judgment of what's happening at all, we can effectively automate through AI. And this whole, you know, the whole thing, the models and how we present it to users is what we call enlightened. Great stuff. And so what's the impact been like on, on, the, on the teams and, and the supervisors? Yeah. Um, so I think... Um, where we where we've deployed it, you know, as I say, it's, it's early days, and, and but where we've deployed it, um, it's it's impacted, I think, all the way through. You know, the agents, the the, the agents or call handlers or whatever, you know, they they like the fact that they're now being assessed on the totality of their work. 
you know, it's it's you know, it, it all there was also case, oh well that was just a all that was, but it's like you know, they are being seen on all of what they do. And and you know, and when you do look at you know, we all have varying levels of performance and we all have sort of strengths and weaknesses, but this really this really highlights it. So they can see that they can even if there's areas to be of improvement, there are areas where they're strong. So the employees are like like it. And the team leaders like it because um you know, rather than if you're preparing for a, you know a monthly coaching session, you've got to go off and try and find some calls. And it's quite you know, if you last month we were talking about X, if you want to talk about X again, it's sometimes quite hard to find a call that's in the same structure, same flow. So, so it's a so, so example. But basically, because they've got every call in there, they can sit there and go, I'm not going to focus on Bing, Bing, Bing. I'm just going to focus on this for whatever it is. And so they can they they can coach more effectively. Um, and also they can get to the calls more, you know, easily. So they, therefore it's easier for them to get to the calls that they can, they can do something with and, and, and action and coach on. And, they, and it's really, you know, for them, it's, it's that movement from, you know, quality management being a you know, process, to more of a, you know, quality management being more of a, you know, this is a coaching, well, rather than management process, it's a coaching process, it's an enabling process. And at the height, you know, if you take it up the level, the organisations who've used it, you know, they've seen things like you know, customer sat, you know, transactional NPS scores have gone up, general NPS or CSAT scores have gone up, employee satisfaction goes up, and they can be, you know, the 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 time, the efficiency of the whole program, is, it becomes more efficient. So there's savings that way as well. So basically, all all levels in the organisation, they're sitting there going, you know, this is taking us to the next level of what. We're Great stuff, and uh, and it's available now. Then I, I believe yep. it's uh, it's yep. delivered from the cloud. I take it, so it's something that yep. uh, is relatively straightforward yeah. to get up and running with. Yeah. So you know, um, there are various options. You know, for customers and existing Nexedia customer, then yeah, you're right. You know, it's just it's a nut. It's, we just add on the application onto the server. It is possible, um, you know, to run it out. So if you don't have analytics, it is possible just to to, to run it standalone as well. And then ultimately, yes, you, know, you could then roll out the analytics piece. So yeah, it's delivered from the cloud. You know, it, 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 in, an, you know in an analytics world, it's a relatively easy add-on. In the standalone world, it's just we need the calls, the transcripts from the calls, and we can work that way. Um, and yeah, the results can be exported you know, from an Excel type version, or there can be dashboard views that agents, team leaders, whoever can take on. Great stuff. It sounds fascinating. And for anyone looking for more information, how can they get in touch with NICE? Okay, so there's um, a white paper that's been published, which is available on the white, uh, the, white the NICE website, uh, which is nice.com. I think it's nice.com backslash analytics, and there's a white paper there talking about Enlighten. I think it's in, there's a couple, but it's Enlighten or customer satisfaction or Enlighten agent behaviors. Great. Thanks, Jonathan. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you ever so much for joining me. Pleasure, Rob. My pleasure. Great. Thanks for everyone for tuning in. If you've enjoyed today's session, don't forget to give us a quick like or a share. And we'll be back again very soon. Until then, thanks for watching.